Hello and welcome to India Business Hour. I'm Arundhati Ramanan and these are the top headlines that we're tracking for you this evening. Prime Minister Modi and Chinese President Xi hold their first bilateral meet in five years in Russia's Kazan. Modi says mutual trust, mutual respect and mutual sensitivity are key to ties between India and China. The meeting comes days after India and China reached an agreement on border patrolling in eastern Ladakh. Hindustan Unilever marginally misses estimates in Q2, profit down 4%, margins contract, but in line with estimates, volume growth of 3% is below estimates. Board decides to separate the ice cream business, which contributes 3% to overall revenue. Setback for Baiju's as lenders reclaim control of the troubled edtech company. Supreme Court sets aside the company law appellate tribunal's decision to halt the insolvency proceedings. Apex Court also scraps Baiju's settlement with BCCI, rules that US-based lenders have raised legitimate concerns over round tripping. The Supreme Court upholds the power of state governments to tax and regulate industrial alcohol. A nine-judge ju bench overturns a 34-year-old verdict with an 8-to-1 majority. The minutes of the last monetary policy meeting show RBI members remain cautious on inflation. Governor Das warns against loosening the restraints too quickly. New external member Nagesh Kumar dissents, says rate cut needed to revive demand and boost private investment. SEBI chief Madhvi Puri Butch could appear before the Public Accounts Committee tomorrow. Sources say the Hindenburg allegations against her are not on the agenda, but lawmakers can ask questions about the charges. Israel claims to have killed the presumed leader of Hezbollah in an attack earlier this month. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken calls for a ceasefire and says the U.S. fully rejects the idea of a permanent occupation of Gaza by Israel. Union strike and defence contract wars eat into Boeing's revenue. The aircraft manufacturer reports a loss of $6 billion for the third quarter, the largest since 2020. Hoax bomb threats continue to disrupt Indian aviation. Indigo and Akasa report fresh threats today. More than 170 bomb hoaxes have been reported in the last 10 days. Government urges social media companies to act proactively against the circulation of such threats. Uber India surpasses 1 million drivers on its platform, third country to hit this milestone after US and Brazil. Uber India head Prabhjit Singh says the company is doubling down on India, shrugs off concerns about new entrants. That's an exclusive. Priyanka Gandhi Vadra makes her electoral debut, files her nomination for the Wynard Bipoles, flanked by her family after holding a roadshow. Those were the headlines that we're tracking for you this evening, but straight to the day's market action. A volatile day saw the Nifty and Sensex end mildly in the red. Banks fell in line with the blue chips. However, mid-caps bucked the trend. And as you can see, the index ended over half a percent in the green. In the oil market, crude oil prices slipped after data showed the U.S. crude inventories had swelled more than expected. However, losses were capped as the market watched diplomatic efforts in West Asia after Israel continued attacks on Gaza and Lebanon. Brent is around $75 a barrel. Gold and silver prices hit fresh all-time highs in India amid escalating tensions in West Asia and a surge in investor demand. Silver prices breached the 1 lakh rupee per kilo mark in the country. Globally, however, silver prices have surged nearly 48% this year, outperforming gold, all industrial metals and energy commodities. The top story this evening, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping held their first bilateral meeting in five years on the sidelines of the BRIC summit in Russia's Kazan. The meeting comes days after the nations agreed on a border patrolling arrangement in eastern Ladakh. Ties between India and China had deteriorated rapidly after troops clashed at Ladakh's Galwan Valley in June 2020. The Prime Minister in his statement said that mutual trust and respect were crucial to ties between the nations. Jinping said that both nations should handle disagreements and differences properly. भारत और चीन के संबंधों का महत्व केवल हमारे लोगों के लिए ही नहीं लेकिन वैश्विक शांति स्थिरता और प्रगति के लिए भी हमारे संबंध बहुत अहम है एक्सेलेंसी सीमा पार पिछले चार वर्षों में 
उत्पन्न हुए मुद्दों पर बनी सहमति का हम स्वागत करते हैं सीमा पर शांति और स्थिरता बनाए रखना हमारी प्राथमिकता रहनी चाहिए म्यूचुअल ट्रस्ट म्यूचुअल रिस्पेक्ट और म्यूचुअल सेंसिटिविटी हमारे संबंधों का आधार बने रहना चाहिए For both sides to keep to the trend of history and the right direction of our bilateral relations, it's important for both sides to have more communication and cooperation, properly handle our differences and disagreements, and to facilitate each other's pursuit of development aspirations. It's also important for both sides to shoulder our international responsibility. Set an example for boosting the strength and unity of the developing countries, and to contribute to promoting multipolarization and democracy in international relations. PM Modi and President Xi Jinping had their first proper bilateral meeting in five years, and definitely the first after the Galwan attacks. Both leaders agreed that it was very important to implement. The recent agreement reached between the two countries,、uh, and that was very important for revival of normal bilateral relations between the two nations. Prime Minister Modi underscored the importance of properly handling differences and disputes, and not allowing them to disturb peace and tranquility. Both leaders instructed the special representatives, that is, Ajit Doval on the Indian side and Wang Yi on the Chinese side, to meet at an appropriate date to start working out measures. To implement the recent agreement between the two sides, when asked to clarify as to what does the arrangement agreed upon by India and China really entail, the foreign secretary said that in 2022 they had、uh, reached an agreement with China to disengage in certain areas along the LOC. There were remaining tension points and friction points along Depsang and Demchok, and now the agreement covers all the pending issues between the two countries.、Uh, when asked whether this will lead to、uh, removal of forces from the LAC and whether the troops will not have to、uh, face another harsh winter at the LAC,、uh, the foreign secretary said that this question would be best answered by the Indian Army and the Indian Armed Forces as well. But hopefully, considering. That、uh, the agreement between the two sides have been endorsed by both Prime Minister Modi and President Xi Jinping. This will pave the way for normalisation in bilateral relations as well. He also said that、uh, India and China had been working on disengagement for a very long time, and、uh, they also thanked Russia for providing a venue for talks. Right, Parichit. Many thanks for、uh, detailing that for us. But moving on to all the earnings action of the day, Hindustan Unilever's earnings for the second quarter were a slight miss from street estimates. Net profit dropped nearly four percent, while revenue marginally grew、uh, more than a percent on an annual basis. Mangalam Malu brings us the details. Mangalam. Alichu will report its second quarter numbers, and in line with what we've seen in all other companies this time around as well, the quarter was slightly soft. The company reported a two percent revenue growth as against street expectations of a little over two and a half percent itself, with underlying volume growth coming in at three percent. This too was shy of street expectations of four to five percent as well, and that trickled down all the way to the bottom line, where both the EBITDA as well as the net profit were slightly shy of estimates. However, there were some green shoots in the numbers as well, and that was the beauty and well-being business, which grew at around seven percent. The street. Was working with a number of around seven to eight percent growth out there.、Uh, we also saw some good growth in home care business, which saw、uh, an eight percent revenue growth as against street expectations of mid single digit. What did not do well for the company was personal care, where there was a mid single digit revenue decline along with volume decline, and at the same time, foods and refreshments too. Because of weakness and down trading in tea, that business saw a decline of about two percent. But apart from the numbers, the management commentary they are seeing some moderation in urban consumption, even as there is. Gradual pickup in rural demand. So, in the very near future, they don't expect accelerated demand, but they do see some increase in raw material prices, and as a result of which, there could be low single-digit price growth in the forthcoming quarters. Apart from the numbers, the most important announcement that came by today was the decision of the committee to go ahead and separate the ice cream business. Remember, the ice cream business,、uh, which is about three percent of Unilever sales, Hindustan Unilever sales, was、uh, expected to.、Uh, the future of that was expected to be determined. 
determined by an independent committee and now the decision has come by which is uh, separate the business whether it is separating it and listing it separately or maybe you know uh, selling it to another player is a decision that the board will come to only by the end of this year so that's about hindustan unilever back to you and HOL's management believes that rural markets have been recovering gradually. Answering CNBC TV 18's question, HOL CEO Rohit Java said that the sector has seen a slowdown in urban markets. However, it's a near-term phenomenon. The rural markets have been on the recovery path for some time and continue to recover gradually. And uh, please note that it's about a third of our business comes from rural areas and two-thirds comes from urban areas. In the recent uh, near term, we have seen... Um, uh, a certain slowdown in the urban markets. They are continuing to grow, but the growth rate is, uh, is trending down. And on the whole, therefore, the markets are uh, slightly, slightly down compared to where they were, say, a few quarters back. Now, it's a near-term phenomenon, mm -hmm. and it could be driven by various macro, macro factors that could be short-term and long-term in nature. And staying with earnings, TVS Motor reported a weak set of numbers in the second quarter, missing street estimates across all parameters. The company's net profit rose nearly 24%, while revenue jumped more than 13% on an annual basis. Bajaj Finsurf gained over a percent after it reported a good set of numbers in the second quarter. Net profit rose 8% on a yearly basis to a little over 2,000 crore rupees. A higher interest income and insurance premium income bolstered the bottom line. Meanwhile, revenue from operations grew 30% year on year. The company's life insurance arm, Bajaj Alliance Life Insurance, showed robust growth while its general insurance business reported a net loss. The minutes of the last monetary policy meeting show RBI members remain cautious on inflation. Governor Das warned against loosening the restraints too quickly. New external member Nagesh Kumar was the lone dissenting voice. He said that a rate cut was needed to revive demand and boost private investment. Take a look. Having managed the inflation very well and keeping in mind uh, our imperative for reviving growth, it was a good time to begin, uh, you know, normalizing the monetary policy by cutting uh, the rate by uh, 25%, uh, 25 basis points. SEBI Chief Madhvi Puri Butch could appear before the Public Accounts Committee tomorrow. The PAC will conduct a performance review of India's telecom regulator and market regulator. Sources say the Hindenburg allegations against Madhvi Puri Butch are not on the agenda, but lawmakers can ask questions about the charges. Shares of Paytm Parent 197 Communications surged nearly 9% in today's trading session. This after the company received a nod from the National Payments Corporation of India to onboard new UPI users. The approval is subject to 197 Communications adhering to regulatory guidelines. The move comes nearly nine months after the Reserve Bank of India barred Paytm from onboarding new users on the platform. The Automotive Research Association of India has sought more clarification from Ola Electric regarding their compliance with the PLI and PM eDrive scheme. Sources have told CNBC TV 18 that the company had submitted a response to the authority regarding questions on service centers and customer warranties. However, ARAI examined the reply and sought more details. Ola Electric also told Central Consumer Protection Authority that out of the 10,644 complaints mentioned in the notice, 99% have been resolved. And in Court Corner, a setback for Baidu Supreme Court has set aside the company law appellate tribunal's decision to halt the insolvency proceedings. The Apex Court also annulled Baidu's settlement with BCCI and ruled that the US-based lenders have raised legitimate concerns over round tripping. With this verdict, lenders have reclaimed control of the company. Ashmit Kumar joins us now with more. Ashmit, you know, take us through the significance of this verdict. Well, a major setback coming in for Baiju with the company being thrown back into insolvency by the Apex Court, a major judgment coming in uh, from the Supreme Court. Now, bear in mind that Baiju's locked in an insolvency battle had looked to settle that insolvency dispute by paying the BCCI the amount of 158 crore rupees. And importantly, uh, the NCLAT had obliged, had authorized the settlement and had closed the insolvency proceedings. U.S. lenders, clearly aggrieved by that, had moved the apex court. They raised questions of unpaid dues. They raised questions of siphoning off of funds of U.S. courts issuing orders against Baiju Ravindran and his brother. And on the back of that, the apex court took note of this matter. Now, very cleverly, the Supreme Court has not gone into the merits of the allegations and the counter-allegations that have been raised. Rather, 
The Supreme Court has looked at procedural anomalies. The Supreme Court said uh, that if a settlement were to be filed, it had to be filed by the IRP and not the parties themselves. So that's clearly not happened in this case. Further, the Supreme Court said that a settlement application is not made before the NCLAT, but rather before the NCLT, which again did not happen in this case. This, the Supreme Court says, is a grave departure from established practices and procedures under the IBC, and therefore on that count alone, the NCLAT order needs to be set aside. Uh, the insolvency proceedings will now resume. The COC will take over. And also importantly, even that settlement sum of 158 crore rupees now goes in the hands of the COC. Right, Ashmit. But, you know, stay with us. Let's talk about the other case as well. A nine-judge Supreme Court bench overturned a 34-year-old judgment of the Apex Court. The top court has held that state governments have the power to regulate and tax industrial alcohol. Uh, you know, Ashmit, take us through this order and what it means. Well, a rare sight, this, uh, the highest court of the country, nine-judge bench of the Apex Court sitting together, passing a landmark judgment in a case that goes back 25 years, a case that will have repercussions across the country. The moot point before the Apex Court was who taxes industrial alcohol? Is it the centre or does the power rest with the state government? Now, the issue goes back to 1999 when the UP government had sought to levy an ad valorem fee of 50% on manufacture and sale of industrial alcohol. Now, this had been challenged uh, across various high courts, then the Supreme Court. It's been through various rounds of litigation as well. The question that was raised by the UP government is that in a post-GST world, in a post-GST regime, such sources of revenue are critical uh, for the state government. The centre on its part, however, had argued that it is the centre that exercises control over these industries and that the state government has no business. This issue has been decided in favour of the state government in a ratio of 8 to 1. The Supreme Court has held that it is the state government that has the power to, in fact, go ahead and tax industrial alcohol. Now, this is uh, going to have large revenue implications across the board for various states, not just UP. Kerala was also a co-applicant to co-petitioner in this case. And also what is rather interesting is that the UP uh, government, headed by the BJP, is interestingly arguing, is seen arguing against the centre, which again is helmed by the BJP. So an interesting turn of events, the Apex Court holding this case in favour of the state government. Right, Ashmit. Many thanks for those details. Now, hoax bomb threats continue to disrupt Indian aviation. Indigo and Akasa report fresh threats today. More than 170 bomb hoaxes have been reported in the last 10 days. Government urges social media companies to act proactively against the circulation of such threats. In global earnings, Boeing has reported a $6 billion loss in its third quarter, and this is the largest quarterly loss since 2020. This hit comes amid workers protesting over low pay. The cash-strapped company reported a 2% drop in revenue on an annual basis. Deutsche Bank's third quarter numbers were largely in line with street estimates. The bank reported a profit before tax of 2.2 billion euros, witnessing a 30% jump on an annual basis. The bank has also raised its loan loss provision forecast at the back of a weak German economy. Net revenue rose 5% to 7.5 billion euros. Coffee chain Starbucks has reported weaker than expected sales in its preliminary fourth quarter numbers. Net revenue and profit weighed down by weak demand in the US declined as well. The firm has also suspended its forecast to the next fiscal in a bid to give its new CEO, Brian Nickel, time to script a turnaround. Coming up on India Business Hour, Uber India surpasses 1 million drivers on its platform, the third country to hit this milestone after US and Brazil. Uber India head Prabhjit Singh t says the company is doubling down on India. Details in a bit. Stay tuned. And you can also catch all CNBC TV 18's news and updates on Facebook, X, Threads, Instagram and Geo Cinema. You are watching India Business Hour. Israel claims to have killed the presumed leader of Hezbollah, Hashim Safi Din, in an airstrike earlier this month. 
Safiuddin has the, was the head of Hezbollah's political decision-making body and was reportedly selected to lead the group a few years ago. The Lebanon-based militant group has not commented on Israel's claims just yet. Meanwhile, Israeli missiles continue to target cities in Lebanon. After pounding Beirut overnight, IDF struck the port city of Tyre, which is home to a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Lebanese officials have said that it needs $250 million a month to help more than a million people displaced by Israeli attacks. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has urged Israel to use the opportunity for a strategic result for bringing back hostages and de-escalate tensions in Gaza. Israel has achieved most of its strategic objectives when it comes to Gaza, all with the idea of making sure that October 7th could never happen again. In the space of a year, it's managed to dismantle Hamas's military capacity. It's destroyed much of its arsenal. It's eliminated its senior leadership, including most recently Yahya Sinwar. This has come at the cost, great cost, to Palestinian civilians in Gaza. Now is the time to turn those successes into an enduring strategic success. And there are really two things left to do. Get the hostages home and bring the war to an end with an understanding of what will follow. And back home in national news, Priyanka Gandhi Vadra has made her electoral debut. She filed her nomination for the Weinart Bipoles, flanked by her family after holding a roadshow. Remember, the Weinart seat was vacated by Rahul Gandhi after he decided to retain the Rai Bareilly constituency. I was saying that it has been 35 years since I have been campaigning for different elections. This is the first time that I am campaigning for your support for myself. Let's shift the focus now to Maharashtra, which heads to the polls next month. Marathwara, the hotbed of the Maratha reservation movement, could have a significant impact on the elections this time. Here's why. Manoj Jarange Patel, the man who has emerged as the leader of the campaign, plans to field candidates across the state. Remember, Patel's agitation impacted the ruling NDA significantly in Maratwara in the Lok Sabha elections. Santia Gora with this story. Maratha reservation is undoubtedly one of the most important election issues for the upcoming Maharashtra State Assembly elections. Right now we are being joined by a group of people who are associated with the Maratha reservation movement. We'll talk to them and understand what exactly are they expecting from the upcoming State Assembly elections. Thank you very much for talking to us. You are going to be standing in the election. What do you want to be standing in the election? This is the Sangar Shyoda, Manoj Zarangya Patil Ji. इन्होंने ये आंदोलन सिर्फ सोशल वर्क के लिए और मराठा रिजर्वेशन के लिए किया था महाराष्ट्र में जानबूझ के ये मराठा समाज के साथ भाजपा और देवेंद्र फडणवीस जी जानबूझ के ये खेल खेल रहे बम्बई को जब मराठा योद्धा जरंगे पाटिल के नेतृत्व में समाज पूरा बम्बई को गया वो टाइम भी जो महाराष्ट्र के सीएम है डीसीएम है उन्होंने आके वहाँ पे जो कागज दिया समाज को कि ये तुम्हारा कुन भी आरक्षण लागू करेंगे वो पूरा फंसाया समाज का और कुन भी आरक्षण दिया ने वैसा पास या छह बार होगा छह उपोषण करे उसमें सरकार ने कुछ ही मराठा समाज का सवाल नहीं किया जातीय हिंसा भड़काने का आरोप भी आप लोगों के आंदोलन पे है ऐसी कुछ बात नहीं है आपने अभी तक देखा तो 20-25 साल से मराठा समाज ओबीसी आरक्षण की मांग कर रहा है और कुछ जातीय अभी कुछ दिन पहले ही कुछ जाति ओबीसी में शामिल करने का काम ये सरकार ने किया हुआ है सिर्फ मराठा समाज को बाजू को रखने का काम ये जो अभी सरकार है इसने किया था मराठा समाज पूर्वी पास ओबीसी आरक्षण आती मराठा कुंबी हा एक मराठा एनी वे फॉल अंडर ओबीसी कैटेगरी Marathas and Kunbis are the same. Kunbis have reservation under OBC category. But we don't. We are brothers. Why don't we have the same reservation? We don't have the same reservation. We don't have the same reservation. Because what is the Supreme Court capping? There is a 50% cap. A separate reservation can never come into effect. My priority will always be Maratha reservation. There will be no compromise on that. So this was Manoj Jarangi Patel. He says that Maratha reservation was, is and will be his top most priority. But as far as political ambitions are concerned, he says that passively he is going to participate in that and him trying to contest candidates in the upcoming state assembly elections is a sign of that.
in Jalna with camera person Swapnil Bandekar. This is Santhya for CNBC TV18. The Supreme Court has extended by two weeks the interim bail granted to Malayalam actor Siddiqui in a rape case. The court adjourned the hearing as the actor's lawyer sought more time to respond to Kerala police's report. The police has sought a custodial interrogation, citing a stockpile of ed evidence against the actor. Siddiqui has been accused of raping a young actress. At least six people have died after a building that was under construction collapsed in Bengaluru due to heavy rains. Officials have said some people are still trapped under the debris. Fire and emergency services are currently conducting search and rescue operations. The police have arrested the owner of the building and have filed a case of negligence against him. Cyclone Dana is set to hit coasts of Odisha and West Bengal in the next 24 hours. More than 5,000 relief centres have been set up and both the governments are gearing up to evacuate people in the impacted regions. The Indian Coast Guard has said it was on high alert and have deployed aircraft and vessels to the affected areas. India is a multi-decade opportunity for Uber. That's the word coming in from the ride-hailing platform's India president. Speaking to CNBC TV18's Ritu Singh, Prabhjit Singh said that Uber is focusing on doubling down on the mobility business in India. Uber recently surpassed 1 million drivers on its platform in India, the third country to hit this milestone after US and Brazil. Take a look. We are very much obsessed about doubling down in the India market. It is one of the fastest growing markets in the portfolio, third largest already, mm -hmm. and no reason why it can't be a top two market or the largest market at some point in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, we continue to see that our market position is the strongest it has been in our history in the market. Right. Uh, we are market leaders and we continue to focus on serving more earners and riders uh, on a regular basis. Uh, we can't take our position for granted. The Uber India president also welcomed Karnataka's draft bill providing social security to gig workers. The bill seeks to levy an additional cess on every transaction on aggregators' platforms to create a welfare fund for gig workers. Prabhjit Singh India's, uh, said that India's code on social security passed by both houses of the parliament is a landmark bill but hasn't been notified or implemented just yet. But there will be instances of health emergencies, family emergencies, and a safety net should be provided. The best way to do that is to actually have an industry-wide contribution mm. from platforms. Okay. So in that spirit, we actually welcome measures towards that. Yeah. Having said that, we believe that the code on social security, which both houses of the parliament in India have actually passed, yeah. and I would argue is a landmark bill, mm. uh, and I would say it's probably a shining light for multiple countries globally, mm. The, unfortunately, it's not yet gotten notified and implemented, so we are advocating for that to get implemented. Sure. That will make it easier yeah. for platforms like us, which have pan-India footprint, to actually participate and contribute uh, to that safety net versus doing it state by state. And with that, it is a wrap on this edition of India Business Hour. Thank you for watching. News continues right here on CNBC TV 18.